The universe is 13.8 billion years in the making. Let that sink in for a while. It has always been one of the most mind-boggling questions people have asked for generations. How did the universe come about? In this session, we will look at the theories surrounding the origin of the universe. Specifically, by the end of this session, you will be able to explain the historical development of theories explaining the origin of the universe and compare the theories on the formation of the universe. One of the most fascinating things that makes us human is having that self-awareness that we not only live to survive, but we ask for existential questions and challenge them through time. We have religions, traditions, philosophies, and sciences providing some sort of answer towards our understanding of our origin. Living in a Christian country, we Filipinos have been used to hearing the lessons from the Bible. The biblical theory of creationism stated in the book of Genesis that the universe was created in a span of six days. In the beginning, God commanded, let there be light. This separated darkness from light. He created the sky, then the land, sea, moon, and every living creature that man would live with. Based on the Hindu text Rig Veda, the universe was contained in a cosmic egg called Brahmanda. Everything in the universe, the sun, the moon, the planets, and space oscillate and expand from a point of origin called Bindu, a process which repeatedly happens throughout time. Of course, not everyone would jump on the wagon in these theories. Throughout time, philosophers also had a hard thought of our origin. Anaxagoras, a Greek philosopher from the 5th century BCE, theorized that the universe was once composed of a mixture of individual in infinitesimally small fragments of itself in various concentrations and locations. At some point in time, Nawos, or the mind, set everything in whirling motion, ultimately forming the cosmos. Lucifus and Democritus, also Greek philosophers, theorized the atomic universe, which essentially claims that the universe is composed of infinity small, indivisible, and indestructible atoms. Their arrangement forms different combinations and shapes forming the universe. Furthermore, they also believe that the universe is like a body where the sun and the stars are its vital parts. Whatever happens to one corner in the space would affect another part of the body. Another theory from the Greek philosophers Aristotle and Ptolemy focused on the Earth being a special area to which everything else in the universe stayed in motion, revolving and rotating around the planet while Earth stayed motionless in space. This proposal is called the geocentric universe. Since they were the brightest minds, everyone took this theory until far later in time was contradicted. Astronomer Nicholas Copernicus in 1543, demonstrated in his heliocentric theory of the universe that the Earth does not necessarily need to be on the center of the universe to explain the motion of celestial bodies. The Sun must be the center of the universe. This was later supported by Giordano Bruno, an Italian philosopher in 1584, but claimed that even the solar system is not the center of the universe, but just one of many star systems in the vastness of space. Isaac Newton in 1687 described the universe to be static, steady state, and an infinite universe. Being static and steady means the gravitational force was balanced across the infinite universe, thus claiming that the universe was composed of matter uniformly distributed in space. French philosopher René Descartes supported Newton's static steady state theory. Though in his Cartesian model of the universe, he claimed that the empty spaces weren't empty, but instead filled with matter swirling around in vortex. These vortices were called gravitational effects. The universe, according to Albert Einstein, was similar to that of Newton. He explained that the universe was neither contracting nor expanding. However, he faced the famous 
Einstein Blander, which accounts for the cosmological constant from his general theory of relativity, to counteract the dynamic effect of gravity, which would cause the universe to collapse. Einstein later left this part of his theory, as American astronomer Edwin Hubble found out in 1929 that the universe wasn't static. The collective knowledge of theories and development of ideas led to the modern theory of the origin of the universe. The modern understanding is also supported by new inventions and types of telescopes and sensors extending the ability of humankind to see and observe the farther regions of space. Simply put, that the universe came from pure energy creating space-time itself in an expanding motion from a point of origin called singularity about 14 billion years ago. This theory is called the Big Bang Theory. The Big Bang Theory was attributed to George Lemaitre, a Belgian Roman Catholic priest in 1927. By common understanding, Big Bang states that it is an event of expansion of the universe. This theory was backed up by studies starting with the observation of Vesto Schipper when he observed that a relative movement of galaxies called the blue shift and red shift. Blue shifting refers to closed galaxies seemingly approaching our galaxy with respect to a center reference point, while red shifting refers to farther galaxies seemingly departing from our galaxy, again relative to a center reference point. This observation was backed up and closely documented by Edwin Hubble wherein he confirmed blue shifting occurs with Andromeda Galaxy which is the closest galaxy to our galaxy, the Milky Way, and observed the same behavior in 16 galaxies within the local group documented on 1970. Red shifting of 11 galaxies was also documented by Hubble in 1915. In conclusion, if the universe was static, no stars would be moving away from a common point. But then, galaxies are seemingly moving in a seemingly expanding motion. With Edwin Hubble's documentation and studies, he was recognized for red shifting of stars in 1929, attributed with the confirmation of the expansion of the universe, the Big Bang. Another study backed up the theory with the discovery of the cosmic microwave background radiation. Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson accidentally detected a disturbance in their newly constructed telescope and receiver in 1965. At first, they thought this was caused by pigeons hanging at their equipment, but then after having them eradicated and the equipment cleaned, the noise remained. Robert Dick theorized their observation to be the radiation detected by the telescope receiver in space as the remnant of the Big Bang. After 30 years, the noise signal similar to the static we see in analog TV was converted into an image which gave Robert Dick a Nobel Prize. As we have previously mentioned, the creation was a huge explosion of energy. Therefore, that pure energy must have released great amount of radiation. It was a great explosion of high energy which became less as it cooled and converted into matter over time. Similar to the dripping milk in a surface, it was assumed that the universe would spread out uniformly. However, as we observe the night sky, there is saturation of more galaxies in an area, while some there is less. Therefore, temperature would have favored the formation of matter in a non-uniform manner or in clumps evident from the converted image from the cosmic microwave background radiation. The dark blue patches were the less saturated area where it was colder, while the red ones were more saturated with matter as this was the warmest. Now that the past was seemingly described, what could be the fate of the universe in the future? We'll look at the Big Bang Theory and the models brought about with it in a later session. In this session, you learned about the historical development of theories explaining the origin of the universe and the comparison between the theories on the formation of the universe. Let's check out what you've learned try to answer the following questions. How would you describe some of the theories of the origin of the universe? What is the comparison among the theories on the formation of the universe? 
How did history play in the formation of the Big Bang Theory as the origin of the universe? It is easy to forget the ideas and beliefs of those who failed to make us hold their truth. Sometimes, they even get discredited. We may have reached a point of conclusion from those who succeeded, but then, the people before them have been the main reason for proving, disproving, influencing a thought until a point of conclusion was met. And I think they should not be forgotten. That's it for this session. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.